now to the breaking news that we're following this evening. Reports Fiat Chrysler and French automaker Peugeot are about to tie the knot, creating what would be the fourth largest automaker in the world. Let's get back to business editor Rob Maloney live tonight at the FCA North American headquarters with the reaction thus far. Rod? Yeah, uh, Devin, you know, they're taking it in stride here. Uh, they're probably not that anxious to talk about. It. In fact, we know because we tried to talk to them. But uh, the company itself is not confirming anything. But the Wall Street Journal is saying out of Europe that the Peugeot board has already approved this. The Fiat Chrysler board has a board meeting tomorrow. And so the belief is that they'll give it the thumbs up and then they'll move on uh, and probably confirm it tomorrow during a conference call. Uh, in the meantime, uh, here at the headquarters, they know about it, they've heard about it, and this is what they had to say about it. Outside the Fiat Chrysler North American headquarters, the 5 o'clock rush was the usual. Considering the number of mergers this company's seen over the last 30 years, employees like Hannah Karam are taking it all in stride. Now you hear what's being said on the news and, and well, stuff. What's so. the reaction inside the building? Um, really, I haven't heard much of anything, you uh -huh. know, it's just been kind of... Is there concern about another merger? Oh, I don't think so. I think it'll be for the good of the company. Here they do know very well that mergers don't always take. The Daimler merger led to the disastrous Cerberus hedge fund takeover and bankruptcy. The Fiat Chrysler merger did work. Cox Automotive analyst Michelle Krebs believes while this could work, there are tough obstacles ahead. PSA is in a pretty healthy condition. Um, it has some weakness. Uh, both Fiat Chrysler and PSA have a lot of weakness in China, the biggest car market in the world. They've got to, they would have to get that figured out. Um, they would be pooling their resources on electric vehicles and that kind of thing. Fiat Chrysler certainly is lagging in that. Then there's the question whether these employees need to worry just yet. I, I don't think uh, Fiat Chrysler employees, especially those in the U.S., need to be concerned uh, at, at this point uh, because they have different geographic footprints and they have complementary products. And I, I think a lot of the emphasis will be more on Europe. Right, and by that she means that the uh, Jeep and Ram trucks are largely going to fuel whatever it is that these companies together can do uh, in the future. In the meantime, we remember, those of us who have been watching the automotive industry very closely uh, for the past maybe 10 years, know that Sergio Marchionne, the late Sergio Marchionne, the former CEO here, uh, had tried very hard to make a merger like this happen, knowing that pooling costs is the right answer going forward when you're talking about autonomous and self-driving vehicles. And so in many ways, this is his legacy left behind. Michael Manley, of course, his successor, is the one that appears to be shepherding it through. Back to you. Yeah, but you go back about 20 years, Rod, you think about all the struggles that Chrysler had trying to marry their styles with, uh, with Daimler back in those days. What might this uh, management of this new company look like? Uh -huh. Well, there's an interesting twist in all of this, because if you know anything about the auto industry, you know that the Nissan and Peugeot uh, were together. And yeah. so uh, the, one of the, the former uh, uh, CEOs in the Nissan group that had been here in North America is now in charge of Peugeot. Um, and so uh, it was one of those things where this executive who appears to be taking over has a very large amount of experience with these kinds of uh, uh, coming together and also dealing with uh, the North American market. And so they say that he is uh, uniquely qualified to be able to manage this thing. So we'll see.